Welcome to St. John's Lutheran Church, Springfield, Ohio. Today is Sunday, June 23rd, 2019. It's the second Sunday after Pentecost. Our pastor is the Reverend John H. Pollock. Our organist is Greg Nolte. St. John's is located at 27 North Wittenberg Avenue, Springfield, Ohio. Our telephone number is 937-325-78. Our telephone number is 3 no. Our telephone number is 
sorrowing world. In your mercy set us free from the chains that bind us and defend us from everything that is evil. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated as you listen to the reading of God. The readings are done by Connie Singleton. Good morning. The first reading is from Isaiah 65th chapter. I was ready to be sought out by those who did not ask, to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, here I am, here I am, to a nation that did not call on my name. I held out my hands all day long to a rebellious people who walked in a way that is not good, following their own devices. A people who provoked me to my face continually, sacrificing in gardens and offering incense on bricks, who sit inside tombs and spend the night in secret places, who eat swine's flesh with broth of abominable things in their vessels, who say, keep to yourself, do not come near me, for I am too holy for you. These are a smoke in my nostrils, a fire that burns all day long. See, it is written before me. I will not keep silent, but I will repay. I will indeed repay into their laps their iniquities and their ancestors' iniquities together, says the Lord. Because they offer incense on the mountains and revile me on the hills, I will measure into their laps full payment for their actions. Thus says the Lord, as the wine is found in the cluster, and they say, do not destroy it, for there is a blessing in it. So I will do for my servants' sake, and not destroy them all. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob, and from Judah, inheritors of my mountains. My chosen shall inherit it, and my servants shall settle there. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let you, O Lord, be not far away.
desire be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinary. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you as were baptized into Christ and clothe yourself with Christ. There is no longer Jew or Greek. There is no longer slave or free. There is no longer male and female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
nation and to the ministry. So, as I said, I will be here during the week. We will have Wednesday night service both of those weeks, but we will be gone uh, at least Saturday, Sunday, on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Uh, we haven't really worked out that it's coming with Calvary, Spin, and Griffin. But for Coleman, we will just be gone Saturday through Monday. Also, one change, since there's no special reason this morning, we will wait and sing, let us talents and tongues employ uh, after we do the creed. So at this time, I'll invite those that came without difficulty to please stand. And for the whole church, we confess our faith. I believe in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Creator, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, Christ His only Son, Son, our Lord who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born in the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated as we sing, let us talents and tongues and glory, page four. Suddenly, see. 
seems to be estranged from you, and you don't really know why. As we look about our society, we see a society that is becoming more and more estranged from one another. And so how do we transform relationships? Now, this is an important question, because studies have shown that churches that have good relationships, positive churches that grow, churches that have negative relationships, churches that have a lot of conflict among its members, are churches that become stale and eventually die. So how do we transform relationships? To answer that question, we turn to St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. We turn to that very first chapter. And in verses 3 through 5, St. Paul gives us the answer to transforming relationships. St. Paul writes, I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making my prayer with joy, because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. In these words, we have the foundation, the roadmap, the blueprint, whatever word you wish to use, for transforming relationships from bad to good, from negative to positive, from a strain to, once again, being close to one another. The very first step in transforming relationships is to have an appreciation for faithfulness. Now, I know that that is something that we preachers, and I'm just like all my brothers and sisters, we have a tendency so often to harp on not the faithfulness of you all, those of you who are here every Sunday, those of you who support the church with your tithes and offerings, those of you to support the church through your efforts and many of the different ministries. Instead, we have a tendency to focus on those whom we can receive. We have a tendency to complain about those whose names are on the road, but we've never seen them. Nobody can remember them. They don't know who they are or who they were and so we tend to focus on that because it never fails that someone like that is the type of person who suddenly wants to have a wedding for their child or they are sick in the hospital or they have to have a funeral and they're the most demanding. They expect you to drop everything you're doing and come meet their needs and say, where have you been the past 19 years? But we haven't even gotten one offer. And so we pastors tend to focus on that instead of appreciating your faithfulness. Instead of telling you all how much it means to Jesus Christ, to the church, and to you pastors, for you to be here every Sunday, to come even when the weather is bad and everybody else is staying home. And so to transform relationships, we have to begin by appreciating the faithfulness of those that we are in a relationship with. Even though you may be at odds right now with that person, you still have to appreciate their faithfulness in that relationship all these years. And nothing is sad than when a parent or child become a strain for one another. And they forget all that faithfulness they had toward each other. Or brothers and sisters becoming a strain from each other over something easy that's silly. They forget to appreciate that faithfulness they had all those years we were growing up. You let something silly tear us apart. So if you want to transform a relationship, you begin by appreciating the faithfulness of those with whom you are in a relationship with, no matter what might be happening. The second step is, and this is the most difficult it seems today, and that is to appreciate the differences. To appreciate the differences between you and those who have a relationship with you. Thank 
God we're not alone. Can you imagine how boring life would be if all of us were the exact same? If we all thought the same way, we all acted the same way, we all dressed the same way, we all had the same favorite foods, the same favorite music, the same favorite everything, life would be pretty dull and boring. So that's why God made us with free will. That's why he didn't make us a robot. He wanted people who would respond to him out of love because they really felt that love with toward him. And not because they felt like they had to. Or they were afraid that if they didn't, he was going to stack them as quick as possible. So we have to appreciate the difference. Now, in our sermon text for today, Paul doesn't really go into it that much. So, to better understand what St. Paul is saying in regards to the second step, we turn to the third chapter of Colossians. Now, the passage I'm going to read from the third chapter might be familiar to some of you because it has become unpopular to read at weddings. Because it basically lays out the foundation stones for a successful marriage and a successful family. As Paul is writing, he is concerned about the church. And he's concerned about the words that come to him about petty differences and petty bickerings that are going on in the church. And just think of this this is just the first. 30, 40 years of the church existence. And we're already having any bigger and any fights or things that are ridiculous, especially when it comes to the wonderful gift of salvation through Jesus Christ. So it says, put on that as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved. Now, listen to that title. God's chosen, holy and beloved. Something such as an attack 
my service book and hymnal to when I was in seminary from 69 to 73, uh, I mean 73 to 77, I didn't follow 69 to 77. Somewhere in between 73 and 77 came the green hymnal, the Lutheran Book of Worship. And there were more changes. There was more of an attempt to put more of Scandinavian tradition into the liturgy. And one of the changes, besides some of the hymns, changing some of the hymns of praise and so forth, were changing the color of Advent from purple to blue, which was a especially Swedish custom. Then came the ELW, the new rhythm. And what it has done is try to incorporate worldwide rhythms. That's why we see the hymns from Africa. We see the hymns from Asia. Central and South America. We see him as from Eastern Europe to give us a more exposure to the diversity of the throughout the Those are differences. Some people didn't like it. Some people still don't like it. I remember the pastor I had for the first 13 years of my life, we took a parish in Florida, and when the OBW came out, they bought it. Three weeks they boxed them up, put them in the basement, brought their old red service book and handle back in, but they didn't like it. But we are to put up with these things as brothers and sisters in Christ. That's how we transform relationships. The word complaint means how he says bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, that means to blame uh, or to have a grievance against someone, which is going to happen. So it says the way you cure it is by forgiveness. That means to be gracious to the person, to pardon, to be kind. I believe it's C.S. Lewis who has said, made the famous quote, that everybody is all for forgiveness until they have someone they have to forgive. But if we are going to transform relationships, we must be willing to forgive. Uh, and he says, forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Must forgive means in this way or in the way of Christ. So there, the instruction is that we are to be in the way of Christ in our relationships. And then, of course, he says, and above all things, put on love. This is that famous word about love of Jesus Christ towards us. An unselfish love, a self-sacrificing love. Love best described in John 3.16 For God so loved the world that He gave His own Son. So we didn't know we needed to be selfish. We didn't know we needed to sin. We didn't know we needed someone to go to the cross and shed their blood to pay the debt of sin that we owe. But God's love for us was so great He was willing to sacrifice only Son, so that would come about. So of all things we put on love, so the three foundation blocks of a successful relationship, a successful marriage, a successful family are to endure, to forgive, and to love. If we do that, we'll be able to make the differences that we come in contact then he says that this love binds everything together. The word bind means that which unites. It's a love that unites us with one another. It's love that unites us with Jesus Christ. It's love that unites us with our Heavenly Father. And then he says this brings about a perfect harmony. The word harmony means completeness. They have full growth. So St. Paul's warning us that if we don't endure, forgive, and love, we will not come to completeness in our faith. We will not fully grow in our relationships, and we will not be mature in our relationships. So we do this so that we can transform our relationships from negative to positive. Unfortunately, there have been those times in the history of the church where we forgot that. And times today, it still happens where 
people end up on opposite sides of a social issue or a political issue or whatever, and they forget to endure to forgive and to love. And we especially see it in our society. People used to have different opinions, but still be friends with one another. Now, it's like we are at war with each other. Whatever happened to that old saying, I may not agree with what you said, but I will fight to the death your right to say it. We look at our landscape and society, and we don't see it. When I was in school, if somebody came to the college to speak and we didn't like it, we just stayed away. We didn't try to prevent the person from speaking, which is a violation of the First Amendment. We didn't put them to a riot in the middle of the street and hold them down the campus. We just ignored the person. That's the best way to show they didn't like what they said. You just ignore them. But today, we see riots, we see people not allowed to speak, we see people labeling them. Uh, an opposite opinion as hate speech instead of just a difference of opinion because we forgot to endure, to forgive, to love. So that is the third, or the second, if I mentioned. The third is to appreciate the efforts of people. Going back to our sermon text, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making my prayers with joy. Partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. Partnership means participation. He is appreciating their efforts in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. He's appreciating their efforts to be the church in Philippi. He's appreciating their efforts for all they do in the name of Jesus Christ. Again, how does that affect? Do we spend too much time being negative and never thinking about praising the person for their effort? Even if we don't agree with their effort, even if they didn't do exactly the way we thought it should be done, whatever, still to praise their effort. They stuck their neck out for Jesus Christ. There was a newspaper editor in a fairly large town, nothing like Chicago or New York. A good size day. And he decided that his time was too valuable to be taken up by people coming in off the street saying they wanted to see him, and when they came in his office, all they did was complain and grunt. So he told his secretary, no longer would he allow, he wishes to allow such people in his office. That if they came in off the street and wanted to see him, she was just telling him he was in a conference. Now, of course, I didn't apply to his fellow workers, people on the paper, but anybody coming in from the street. So, one day this lady comes in from the street and says she wants to see the editor. The secretary gave her the standard answer. Well, I'm sorry, you can't see him. He's in a conference. So, the woman turned around to leave, and before she took a step or two, she turned back around to the secretary and said, Well, please tell the editor the reason I stopped by today is that I wanted to thank you. Obviously, this floor the secretary. That someone was coming to praise the effort, appreciate the effort of the editor instead of complaining. So once she got over her shock, she picked up the phone and pressed you know, the editor's line. And she said, there is a lady out here that has come to see you. Thank you for the editorial you wrote this one. So I told her I'm sure that we would have the time for her. Sure enough, the editor came out of the office and for 15 minutes he spoke with that lady because she had come to appreciate his efforts, not to criticize them or condemn them or say he wasn't writing in the way the editor before had or that's not the way they did things. That's not the way it used to be. She appreciated it. And that's what we have to do in the church. Appreciate everyone's efforts. And 
and spreading the gospel. And when somebody comes up with an idea, our first response should not be, well, we never did it like that. Or we don't do things like that. Or that's not the tradition. Or that's not the way someone told we always did it. No, we have to appreciate their efforts. Because times change. And sometimes the change is for the better. And when you automatically resist something new, you risk losing something back. For an example, some of you, if you're big, well, I, like I, historians, know that President Garfield was a president born here in the high. He had been a general and a hero in the Indian Army during the war between the states. He was elected president, and this was in the days before there was a secret service, in days when you could just walk in the White House and say you wanted to see the president, or you wanted to apply for a job. So there was this strange character who kept showing up at the White House. First he wanted to be Secretary of State, then he wanted to be Ambassador to Turkey, and maybe a couple other things. He wanted to qualify to do anything. Maybe work in the White House State, like in stall, and pitching up the president. But when the president refused to hire him, he was so angry. But one day he read the paper that the president would be at the train station in Washington, D.C. to leave the one and trip to join his family for a couple of weeks' vacation. So the fellow went to the state train station, went up to President Garfield and shot him. But you know what? The wound is not a thing. The president of our family. The reason doctors treating the president did not want to believe or accept a new idea that had come from Europe, medical community, about germs and bacteria and its effect on wounds and problems. At the World's Fair, there's never been a demonstration of this. And doctors in Europe have begun sterilizing everything they need. Well, before President Garfield, I forget one biographer who said, How many doctors can you see? And they all were poking into this room with their dirty fingers and with dirty instruments. And so he developed some kind of infection, and that's what killed him. A wound that should have been non fatal killed him because the doctors were saying, Well, we've never heard of it. We've never done it that Why do we need to wash our hands? Why do we need to sterilize these probes and stuff? That's what happens when you immediately say no to someone's act. And so, to transform relationships, we must be willing to appreciate the efforts of others, even when the effort really goes against what we've always done, what we were always doing. Relationships are a very important part of our lives. And they are especially important in the church, just like in the faith. If there are negative relationships, it affects the growth of the church. If they are positive relationships, they positively affect the growth of the church. So in order to transform relationships, we must appreciate the faith we must appreciate the differences we might have. And we must appreciate the efforts that people give on behalf of spreading the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And by doing this, we will have a healthy church. We will have a healthy family. We will have a healthy society. So may we always appreciate faithfulness differences and of efforts. Um, peace of God which passes all understanding your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. As the offering is being collected, we need to sing Have No Fear, Little Pluck, page 5 in Thank mm -hmm. you.
be to God. That's the conclusion of our 1030 service. Join us next week at 8 o'clock at the Melody Cruise Drive-In Theater or at 1030 in the Sanctuary at St. John's, located at 27 North Wittenberg Avenue, Springfield, Ohio. St. John's has a food pantry open Wednesdays, 9 to 1045. Outreach store open 930 to 1 on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. Closed on Thursday and right now closed on Tuesday until uh, vacationers are back. St. John's has a rainbow table on Friday from noon to one. Everyone is welcome to share a meal. St. John's will have a booth set up in the Mercantile Building at the Clark County Fair from July 19th through the 26th. Join, uh, come by and see us. There's a Wednesday night service in the chapel at 6.30 most Wednesdays. Again, St. John's is located at 27 North Wittenberg Avenue, Springfield, Ohio. Telephone number is 937-323-7508.